Today we're going to learn about empirical formulas. Empirical, when you hear that word, just think of reduced. It's a formula that's been reduced. Once you make a compound in the laboratory, you often can you determine the percent composition information of the elements in the compound. And from that, you can determine the empirical formula of the compound. The empirical formula gives the lowest whole number ratio of atoms of the element in a compound. So this is your definition of empirical formula. Um, here's some examples. CO2 is an empirical formula because you can't, it, the lowest whole number ratio is 1 to 2. Um, but N2H4, which is an explosive, is not an empirical formula. That's what we call molecular formula. When you reduce N2H4 to NH2, which we see right there, that is the empirical formula. Here's a few more examples. Molecular versus empirical formulas. Here we see hydrogen peroxide, the stuff people use for cuts. If that is reduced, we get HO. The one on the right is a molecular formula. The one on the left is the empirical formula. H2O, however, cannot be reduced. The molecular formula is the same as the empirical formula. There's no difference. Um, however, if you look down below that, this actually should be a 6. I just noticed that. C6H12O6 reduces to CH2O. The one on the left is the molecular formula. The one on the right is the empirical formula. That's And if you think of this, you, it, it makes sense why we call things like glucose, glucose and fructose sugars carbohydrates because simply they're a carbage, carbon that has been hydrated, which means there's been a water molecule added to them. So let's go over the steps of how to solve empirical formula problems. There's really four steps. The first step is to assume a mass if one is not given. And the problems will oftentimes be given in percentages and we'll want to assume a certain mass. The next step is to change grams to moles. And the third step is to divide each number of moles by the smallest number of moles. After you have the number of moles of each element, you want it to convert all that number of moles to a whole number ratio. If you have a number like 2, that's already a whole number, so you're set. If you have a number that ends in 0.5, you'd multiply it by 2 to get a whole number. If you have a number that ends in 0 .7, uh, 6, 7, you'd multiply by 3 to get a whole number. 0.25, you'd multiply by 4 to get a whole number. And 0.33, you'd multiply by 3. So let's use this information to try and solve a problem. Well, also, you'll, you'll need to do an empirical formula with the magnesium and oxygen that you, you've percentages that you found in the lab, in which you did on Tuesday. So here's our first problem. What is the empirical formula of a compound that is 25.9% nitrogen and 74.1% oxygen? So the first step, remember, we have to assume a mass. We have a mass of 25.9 grams of nitrogen, 74.1 grams of oxygen. We could assume any mass. The probably easiest mass to assume would be 100. You could assume a mass of 1, a mass of 85, a mass of 42. But why not make it easier on yourself to assume a mass of 100? That means you'd have 25.9 grams of nitrogen and 74.1 grams of oxygen. It doesn't matter what mass you assume. You'll end up with the correct answer if you do the problem correctly. So the next step is a change though, that assume mass of grams to moles. So we'll start with the 25.9 grams of nitrogen. Now we want to change grams to moles. So we know grams is on the top here, so we want to put grams on the bottom of our factor label. And so in our factor label, we put one mole over one gram of nitrogen. Now notice this is not nitrogen by itself, so it's 14 and not 28. The grams of nitrogen cancel out, and now we have moles of nitrogen. That gives us 1.85 moles of nitrogen. Now we're going to do the same thing with the oxygen. We'll start to say 74.1 grams of oxygen. We're going to change grams to moles. So we'll say one mole of oxygen has a mass of 16.0 grams of oxygen. And when we divide those out, we'll get the, we see grams of oxygen cancel. We get 4.63 moles of oxygen. So now we've done the, the uh, second step. So the third step is divide each number of moles by the smallest number. So let's do that. The smallest number we see here is 1.85. So we'll divide both the 1.85 moles of nitrogen and the 4.63 moles of oxygen by 1.85. And we do that, we get a 1.85 ratio, which is not a whole ratio. And empirical formulas need whole numbers, so that's why we divide those numbers. So it's the next step. 
So we, this is a step three. We divide all of them by this, all the numbers of moles by the smallest. Um, so 1.85 divided by 1.85 gives us one. And then 4.63 divided by 1.85 gives us 2.5. We want both of these numbers to be a whole number. And we notice this one is already a whole number, the nitrogen, but the oxygen is not. I want you to think about what number you'd want to multiply this by to get a whole number. Hopefully you came up with the number five, uh, two. You multiply both by two, not just the oxygen. And so the, we know once again that N1 O2.5 is not correct. We need a whole number. We multiply by two and we get those numbers. And now you have whole numbers and the new empirical formula is N205. So this is how you do empirical formula problems. Good luck, and we'll be doing a lot of these in class tomorrow and on our lab. Thanks.